Hi everyone, it's still again here. So today's video is about how can we auto tag our resources. We are going to use Lambda function to achieve this. The previous weeks we we use things like Lambda and um, IAM policy to enforce compliance. We were making sure that no one would be able to launch an instance without providing uh, tags. This week we're going to tag the instance on behalf of a user. How are we going to do this? We're going to use Lambda function as I said and I really wanted to take you guys through the whole process of writing the code but unfortunately the video was becoming too, too long. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to be taking chunks of code pasting them, explaining them to you what it, uh, the code is doing. That way we can then keep this video short. I don't want to waste your time. I want to get right into this. Now, let me go to my um, AWS uh, console. Okay. Now that I'm on AWS console, we need to make sure that we understand a few things first. <clears throat> We're going to need CloudTrail logs, right? And we'll have to create cloud uh, the trail. It's not created by default. We'll have to create one. And we'll have to make sure that we've got a IAM role for our Lambda function. Our Lambda function will have access, need access to, to, to CloudWatch to EC2 and IAM, right? And we, what else do we need? Let's see. We need to go to CloudWatch and make sure that we create a, a rule, right? So let's do that. Let's go to CloudTrail. Come on, come on, come on. Okay, this is our cloud tray. I already have a trail. So if you don't have a trail already, click on trails, create a trail. <clears throat> so what I would say is um, make sure that you, you go with management event. That should suffice. You don't need to go with data event. So let me say, um, in this um, video, I assume that you have knowledge of AWS. You've got knowledge of Porto 3. I'm not going to go to the details because this video will be very long. So I already have a trail and um, it's login now. So you can see here if I click here. So here's my um, trail and you should make sure that you, 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 you create a CloudWatch uh, log group when you are creating your trail. Now that I've got my trail, we need to make sure that we have got a role before we even start with our Lambda. Uh, function go to roles and click on create role we're going to choose lambda allow lambda function to call aws services on your behalf that's what we want to do to make it easy i'm just going to go with uh, full access uh, on distance ec2 full access cloud watch full access and um, I am full access. Cool. Add a tag. Um, I'm, I'm teaching you guys to tag, so I might as well just take my resources. So and this one will call it. It's fine. Let's call it. Uh, <clears throat> I'll put my name in there. 
and the auto tech road dear hall and this is what our lambda are going to have access to create a role okay now that you have created a role let's go to our lambda lambda under compute and let's go with uh, a different region altogether okay we're going to create a function give it a name auto tech pattern 3.7 and the permissions we're going to uh, go with use existing role and this is our role that we just created now <clears throat> create a function now we have created a function but we don't have a trigger at this moment so for our trigger we're not going to do it here we're going to do it on cloudwatch and i'll tell you why so let's search for cloudwatch and go to rules going to create a rule and it will be a event a pattern ec2 where is ec2 now now here on event type aws api call via or via cloud tray this is very important if you don't have cloud uh, uh, cloud tray uh, enabled then this will not uh, succeed we're going to go with specific operation we are going to go with create snapshot um, create image um, create volume vol volume go with run instances let me explain why <clears throat> so what we want to do here is whenever you launch an instance we will auto tag the resources that comes with that uh, instances things like your ebs volumes your eni's right we we're going to be to tag those things and if you decide to create another EBS volume after you have already launched an instance we want to auto tag that EBS volume as well if you decide to create a snapshot of your instance we want to take auto tag that in uh, that snapshot if you create another ENI we want to auto tag so this um, we call them event names right it's like your API calls if you if you the event name is create a snapshot do what trigger our lambda function create image trigger tr trigger our lambda volume run instance trigger our lambda function right and then our lambda function will be the one that has got a code for auto tagging so we'll give it a name and say auto tag rule that should be fine <clears throat> and we go back to our lambda choose our lambda and you see now we have got a trigger here and this is our where we're going to put our code um i'm not going to be able to take you through the whole process of writing code because i did try that and the video was too long almost an hour and i don't want to waste your time so what i'm going to do i'll be copying chunk of uh, chunks of code posting them here pasting them here and 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 and, and explaining them 
that way we can shorten this video so let's do this remove everything here and port uh bottle three right that should be fine now let me go to my code oh my word what did i do now i clicked back by mistake let me open it again so here we are <clears throat> and let me quickly go to my code i'm not going to be explaining everything in detail here otherwise this video will be very long right so <clears throat> let me start with this piece of code here and so this piece of code um i've actually replaced other important stuff on top there let me say back yeah and then i can paste my stuff again yeah cool this piece of code i have two variables there uh, the ec2 and iim i'm going to uh, explain them because i assume you have got uh, knowledge of portal 3 python uh, and cloud um, and aws otherwise this will take very long so what i usually like to do is i like to print the the response that would be sent to my um, um, my lambda right so that i can see what kind of output that sends that gets sent to my lambda function so that's why i print the says print json dump event <clears throat> so i've got two lists there the first list is called ids I'm going to append all the IDs of different resources there and later uh, tag them uh, together. <clears throat> tag, uh, loop through them and tag them. The other one is a list that will only contain the instances. For example, if you decide to launch more than one instance, then I will, I will, I will go through the the, the, the list and add those instance into my instance list <clears throat> um, I, I'll advise that you familiarize yourself with the output that you are going to get or your lambda is going to get so that you know how to <clears throat> uh, go through the JSON and find the information that you're looking for so I've already done that and I know how to find um, the information that I'm looking for like things like the region event name user type ARN principal users I've, I know how to find them and now if you look there I am actually having those variables uh, region detail and all those things uh, assigning them from the <clears throat> the output that I'm getting from the cloud trade So before I can actually get my user, I need to know, are you assuming a role? Are you federated or are you logging in with, AWM, um, with IIM user? And for me to do that, I need to have a if statement that will check first whether you are a IIM user or you are federated or something else. If you are federated or assume role, the user will be attached to the principal. So that's why my code there, uh, under principal there, I split because I've noticed that the principal, uh, if we've got principal, then colon, then the user. So that's why I'm splitting and making sure that I'm getting only the user. And uh, uh, then the if statement says that if the user type is I am user, then I can just easily get my username. 
and now that i've done this i'm just i'm just going to print everything so that i can be able to see everything that i've gathered so far on my in uh, in my cloud tray uh, in my cloud watch uh, logs so i'm just going to print everything there and there is a very interesting part of the json format uh, document that you get there is a part that is very interesting they're called response element let's quickly google aws response element i want you to see something about this response element So this document, if you go down, uh, we are looking for response element. Do we have response element here? Let me find response. Okay, now here we, here we go here. Sorry, the response element for actions that make changes, create, update, or delete actions. If an action does not change state, like list objects, this element is omitted, right? So this is very important. Uh, there is a possibility you can have a, a response that does not have a response element, depending on what it does, your, AP, uh, your API call. We've got another <clears throat> Uh, two uh, things that I'm interested in here is called error code and error message. If it happens that maybe let's say we don't have a response element, we want to check whether we have got response, um, uh, what you call error code and error messages. And if we do have those things, we want to print them into our CloudWatch so that we'll be, we'll be able to see what error we encountered and see how we can fix that error. Okay. Now, what we're going to do in our code is to check whether the um, response element exists or not. And if it does not exist, we want to see. Uh, so our code says here, um, <clears throat> if uh, the response element does not exist, right? Uh, <clears throat> We will check if we have error code and if we do we will print the error code if we have and it will check again if we have got error message and we have an error message it will print the error message and we know basically by this stage that things are not going well and will return false if everything goes well that's where we have else statement we will then uh, move to an interesting stage where we want to know are you creating a snapshot are you creating an image are you running an instance what are you doing based on the response the event names we'll be able to then collect the relevant ids right now with that information let me show you how my how my code looks come here print and this is how the code looks we are saying if event name is equals to create volume append the volume id into id list same thing with snapshot if it's a snapshot we take the snapshot id and we append it and the image and now when it comes to run instances there are a few things that we need to to take care of we know that when you create a, when you launch an instance it triggers a run instance api and when that happens we know that the instance automatically comes with ebs volume and eni so sometimes you might decide to have more than one ebs volume attached to your instance upon launch so we need to therefore take every possible resource that needs to be tagged and add the ids of those resources into our id list right 
data then we can tag them so this piece of code that is coming now is to do exactly what i have just explained now and that's the piece of code so <clears throat> we are saying if uh, the run in uh, the event name is a run instance <clears throat> We know that the information that you are looking for is within the net. It's in the. It's a nested. It's part of the nested uh, response within your JSON document that you are going to receive. And we are then going through. If we happen to launch more than one instance, we are going to go through everything and take all those uh, instance IDs and append them into our IDs. I'm also appending the instances, uh, the instance IDs into the instant list that I have declared on top. This is the first time that I'm using that list to append things into it because I want to only have the IDs of the instance in there. Whereas the other one has got IDs of all these things that we'll be doing, whether it's a snapshot, whether it's a volume, whether it's image or anything. Then after that, we filter based on those instances that we have. Then we look through uh, using this uh, for loop statement that comes after with a nested for loop. And we then go through everything and take the volume IDs that are there. If we, it happens that you have attached more than, um, uh, what to call, attached more than one volume, it will take all the volume IDs the same thing with ENI I can actually go ahead now after at this stage and print uh, the information that I've gathered um, I can now come here and print the things now that we have made sure that we have got all the IDs. I can go ahead and uh, start tagging the resources, but we need to make sure that our ID is not empty, right? If it's not empty, then take everything that is in there and start the process of tagging. So this is the piece of code. It says if ID, meaning if it's not empty, do what tag these resources and owner will be the user name of whoever that is launching an instance so if i log in as a tieho and i launch an instance there will be an a tag called owner with my user and the group that i belong to will be the environment i'm just make, uh, assuming that in your um, in, um sorry in your company you maybe let's say you've got dev broad pre broad and a user can let's say belong to either one of those and then we take that group and use it as an environment i'm just you know saying trying to to challenge myself here yeah, but you can do whatever that you want to do we are done with our code and uh, it should now be ready uh, for us to to test it okay let's go and save this so i've just appended there some comments so that I can be able to read if I happen to revisit this um, uh, Lambda functions after some uh, months or so, I can still be able to remember what I was doing there. Okay, so we have done that. It's now time for us to test our Lambda function. Our fingers are crossed. We go to is it two?
come on easy too and launch instance choose that one there eligible for free tier yes view and launch launch i'm not going to create any key pair launch okay view instance and let's see go to text and here our text environment admin because i'm part of admin group owner bozetti i'm logged in as bozetti our lambda function it's working as intended so if you go back to lambda auto tag and we go to monitoring we choose view logs it's going to open cloudwatch and um, let's wait for it and this is the log stream so you remember the first thing that i did was to print right everything and this is how it looks this is how it looks this whole thing we went through this thing gathering some information that we need like regions and other things right we printed region name uh, event name user type user name um user is part of admin group instance id in this instance i only launched one instance you, uh, you see it shows the total number of instance launch one all this information is based on what we put on our lambda function and it works as we thought it will work i'm happy that it works you can take this um, piece of code and apply it in your environment and yep so what i will do i will link it down uh, under description so that you can have it and use it as you want thank you very much